Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week I'm in Maggie Valley, North Carolina at the museum that runs Wheels Through Time. This is an amazing collection of cars and motorcycles put together by my good buddy Dale Waxler. Now, I could go on and on about this place, but it's probably better to bring Dale in and let him tell you about it. Dale, how are you doing, man? Hi, Dennis. How are you doing? Great to see you again. Great to you. You have got an incredible place here. How did this all come about? Well, you know, I've been collecting for about 38 years, and I stay with it pretty well. You know, the car collection is what I call a decade collection. It spans 90 years of classic cars and the motorcycle collection, all American and everything runs. Some of the rarest bikes in the world here. And it's called the museum that runs because? Everything here is in running condition. You've been in Maggie Valley how long? Four years. Four years and you've really become a destination. Well you know the Great Smoky Mountains, what a beautiful place. Maggie Valley, North Carolina is I, what I see is where history meets hospitality. We've entertained over 200,000 people here at Wheels Through Time. Man, it, it, it's incredible and, and people going through here just seem to be digging digging this to the max. People love this museum. They love the history. They love the flavor of the museum. Everything runs and it's really more than a collection of motorcycles and cars. I call it a collection of people's lives. Yeah, it really is. Well, now this is an amazing thing. This is one that isn't running right now, but right. it did and it will. It's a, it's a 29 Duesenberg, This right? is a 1929 Duesenberg it, Murphy. It's a doozy. <laughs> it's a doozy. It's a Murphy J Roadster J142. So it's the 42nd Duesenberg car built. And uh, what an amazing piece of engineering. Double overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. Um, in 29? Uh, in 29. Well, what told you it was time to restore it? Well, I, you know, like I said, I've been driving it for years, and I had it out on Memorial Day weekend, and it went knock, knock, and I said, who's there? <laughs> and what happened was the connecting rod uh, on number six cylinder melted the Babbitt. Oh, yeah. And um, certainly time uh, to replace that. Have you ever uh, had a Duesenberg connecting rod? You know, I rod? never have. I never have. I'd like you to have that <laughs> as a gift. Well, it's mm -hmm. an honor, I must say. I must say. Well, and I think it's so cool that you're restoring this right here in the museum. Well, you know, people love to come to Wheels Through Time and see all the things run. And to have a rare car like this, a part where people can visually look at and understand how double -head overhead cam motor works and all the internals, um, it's a real educational experience for our visitor. It, it's awesome. Now, you've got some cars here that are in one piece, though, and these things are inside. What do you say we go look at those? Let's go check them all out. All right, man. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, this is a beauty. Dale, this is a 32 Packard, right? 1932 Packard, 902 convertible coupe. Drove got, this some, got some road work. <laughs> drove this car in the Great American Race in 1986 from Los Angeles to New York. How cool was that? It was one of the greatest experiences of my life. It was my real first experience with the Great American Race. What a great fraternity of people, and what a great event. Yeah, and what a great car to do it in. Well, you can't beat a straight eight pack. <laughs> you sure can. Ask the man who owns one. It. Now, there's some interesting things about this car. I don't think I've ever seen this treatment on your, uh, your side mounts here. You know, I'm glad you picked that out. The Stone Guard treatment matches the side mount treatment. I've never seen another Packard in any book or any show that has this, the uh, Stone Guard treatment on the side mount. But it's factory. But it is factory. How That's nice. Correct. How nice. Great looking car, but that one's wild. What do, we, what do we have over here? Special car, 1914 Locomobile. Wow. Man, what a, what a monster, Dale. Locomobile, what year? 1914, 1915. Actually, the body number and the chassis number are far enough apart that it could have taken two years to build this car. Well, it's big enough. I can see how, how it could. Beautiful lines, though, and, and uh, even the, uh, the mother-in-law seat, is that what they call it? Well, you know, mother-in-law seat is the common terminology. However, chauffeur seat is the proper terminology. How do you drive from back here? Well, the chauffeur would drive to the train station to pick up the owner, and the owner would drive the car to the estate. Chauffeur would sit in the back. I see. Very nice. Well, now, locomobiles were originally steam. That's correct. Right? In about 1905, they went gas, and the 648 locomobile, which really gained its fame from 1913 to 1920, only 230 of these chassis were ever built. Wow. Man, and uh, dual side mounts, that's, that was pretty rare, wasn't it? Probably one of the first cars in America with dual side mounts. But I'm a big Lincoln fan, and that Lincoln is calling out to me. Roy Warshawski's Lincoln. Man, J.C. Whitney, huh? That's correct. <laughs> Dale. This is a stunning car, 32 Lincoln. I absolutely love these. What model is this? This is a 1932 LeBaron Roadster, Lincoln LeBaron Roadster. And it was owned by Roy Warshawski? That's correct, the founder of J.C. Whitney, Warshawski Auto Parts. This was Roy's favorite car, no drove it nearly daily. Well, you know, these are just beautiful. And they're, the front end, and now we're into some serious chrome here. You know, the Lincoln headlights are classic. The styling of the grille is classic Lincoln. And... Um, just an amazing piece of history. It, it is a stunning car. Now you've you've uh, pulled a few out of the museum. You got them waiting outside. Maybe we can uh, check them out in the sunlight. Maybe we can take them for a drive. I was hoping we get up on the Blue Ridge Parkway. It's a beautiful day out. It is a beautiful day. Let's go check those babies Absolutely. out. Absolutely. 
Welcome back to My Classic Car. Dale, you got a couple beauties out here today. I, I recognize the caddy, but I, I don't recognize it. It looks like a street rod. It is a street rod, but the interesting story about cleat, and then I'm so glad you found this car at wheels, is this is the world's first street rod. Built in 1932 by Cletus Clovis, lived in Mount Pulaski, Illinois. Interesting man, he was a drummer in a very famous big band. And he built this car to haul his equipment and it has all these cool features and, and it's really something. So, I mean, before anybody was even thinking about street rods, I mean, it was like 15, 20 years before anybody was thinking about street rods almost. Absolutely. Wow. And a lot of, I mean, it's really a cool looking car. It's obviously got a fairly serious chop on it. Well, you know, the chop top is something that stands out right away, but the rain gutters are very special. Padded all the way down to the turtle trunk. And this is the original? This is the original top. Man. Now, the paint job on this car is unusual in the fact that this is brush painted lacquer. So it'd be brushed on and then hand rubbed. So it's hand rubbed brushed lacquer. Inexpensive way to paint, but it made a nice finish and it's been durable for 60 some years, 70 some years. What was this made out of? Well, I think it was made out of a Model A two door Phaeton. Or, or, or a uh, some kind of 32 two-door uh, full convertible and let me show you why when you raise the uh, spare tire carrier on this car and you look back this is a this is a model a color back here oh, this yeah. yellow is a model a color so this is actually the original back of the car he's added this beautiful little wooden turtle on the back but spare tires included gas caps concealed what, what you know workmanship on this is incredible really innovative stuff a lot and obviously you know because the the front completely stumped me. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff done up here, too. Well, you know, the, uh, the tradition of street riding, of course, is to lower the car, narrow the car, and just drop it down. And what he's done, he was way ahead of his time. If you look up underneath here on both sides, this is a, what's called a dropped and filled axle, uh -huh. way ahead of his time. And then back yonder in the frame, you can see where he zed the frame. So he's taken the, t the frame channel, and he's dropped it which drops the entire car, and he's put little triangular wedges, and that's what's called a Zed frame. Well, and, and it says supercharged V8. Yeah, but that's a fooler. <laughs> must have been a, he must have been a spoofer because it's not. It's not a V8, nor is it supercharged. Pop that All little right. latch right there. And here's the monster power plant right here. Model C, four-cylinder. That's a counterbalance four-cylinder with a fuel pump. And, uh, you know, he's got his spare coil on here. This is all handmade stuff. Kept his tools in place. Spare key right here. Was that where the key was when you bought the car? Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> and then he's made this beautiful brace for the, for the shell and crosses over here, goes down to the body. Well, well interior-wise, I mean, is it, can I open it? Yeah, absolutely. So is it all, it looks it's, pretty much all original there, too? It's all hand-built. You know, if you look at the floor, it's a hand-pounded hand copper floor tray all wood construction the steering wheel and seats are of unknown origin so like the the seat just tipped forward that's correct oh how access convenient. to the back put your luggage or your band equipment back there i don't know how he got a big bass drum in there but <laughs> man what a what a cool what, what a, a cool, cool ride. And, and like some sort of mohair type uh, fabric you know the seats are kind of an unknown maybe they're dodge or chevy or dort or something unusual but they're certainly not ford and neither is the steering wheel. How's she close? Slammer shot. Oh man, that's awesome. Now, like everything here, this baby runs. Of course it runs. Go ahead and close her up. Let's take it for a spin. Let's do it. Locking hood. I'll hit the magic button. The magic button so I can actually get in, right? I love the self-locking door. You have to, you got a trick in there, right? Secret switch. Hey, it works. Self-locking door. <laughs> self-locking door. That's tight, too. He wasn't a very big guy, was he? he? Was, uh, Clayton was a little bitty guy. Bruh. He must have had a little bitty girl. <laughs> Contact. <laughs> this had to be cool in 32. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Wow, well this one that this is one that hasn't been street rided here. A uh, 30 Caddy, right? 1930 Cadillac wow. V16 Madam X Coupe, wow. and it runs like a top. And it's a Madam X Coupe. What's a Madam X Coupe? Well, the, the real definition of Madam X Coupe uh, in 1930 was the, uh, came from the very thin windshield posts. These here? That's correct. And so when you're in the car, you have nearly total vision all the way around. Oh, nice. I mean, what a, what a monstrous car, and, and all the, the appointments on the front. I mean, there's, 
Well, it's got it's got plenty of lights and plenty of horns. You can never beat the Cadillac hood ornament. Got to have that. And um, I guess it has six lights in the front. And of course, under the hood is a beautiful part. The, the beautiful. Well, let's look at that beautiful part. Lift up over here. Yeah, right there. Got her. Some metal in that too, isn't there? And it's a heavy. I'll tell you what. It's, yeah, just lay her over. It is a heavy hood. You know, 452 cubic inches. Man. Um, overhead valve V16. Very similar to the 12, except they added four. Dual updraft carburetors. Steep angle. Did you repaint it and everything? No, this car was painted in around 1962, and subsequent owner Neil Young owned the car for a little while. Neil Young owned this car. Neil Young. Oh, owned one this of my car. heroes. <laughs> he is uh, all of our heroes. Oh man. And uh, I think he'd be pr pretty proud to see it uh, courting down the road today. Well, let's close it up and have. Look a little bit more on the outside before we head on the road. Yeah, now what else? So this was the Manum X Coupe. Were there any other appointments that made it the Manum well, X? Well, I, I can't specifically say this did it, but this sweet bow is very unusual for Cadillac in 1930. Their styling was a little more stodgy, and they had the big flat line look there mm, yeah. with the boxes, and usually their louver had some woodworking on them. Can you open her up? Absolutely. What I like when you open up, the light comes on in the dome, and of course your courtesy light on the oh, outside. Well, it's a Cadillac, man. It <laughs> is the Cadillac. This is when Cadillac got its name. And it's stood the test of time. Oh, listen to that. But all the way back, I mean, beautiful, beautiful lines. You know, back to the, uh, these, these honking tail lights sticking out there, and the luggage rack, what a nice feature. The luggage rack is a cool thing, and you know, they would put the trunk on this. Beautifully trimmed with chrome pieces. Look how nice oh, all the good. chrome on this car is. This car must have been in tremendous shape when it was found in the early 60s and repainted. So you say this does go down the road, eh? That's, that's, it sure does. Like maybe even uh, up on the parkway. Let's go, let's go up on the parkway. Let's check it out. Beautiful day. <laughs> Beautiful day. Hey, and I can get in this one by myself. <laughs> no doubt. This is such a great addition. I mean, what a what a great car. Well, I'll tell you. You know, the uh, when I saw this thing in the cat in the catalog, certainly a V16 uh, convertible coupe would not fit a budget. But I kind of snuck in the V16 coupe, which is you know probably technically a rarer car than yeah. the uh, convertible coupe. And I, I actually like the lines of this coupe. I mean, I just think it's beautiful. Thank you very much. Well, I think there's a pull-off up here. How would you like to drive? You know, I would like to drive. Dale, I would like to drive. I'm a happy man. <laughs> and you're in the driver's seat. Rock and roll America. Off we go. Yeah, what, a, what a ride. <laughs> what a ride. Oh, man. That is so cool. And everything here runs. I mean, everything at Wheels Through Time Wheels Through runs. Time, the museum that runs. The museum that runs. I can come back, can't I? I hope you come back every, yeah. every, every year, every week. Man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Thank it, you, man. I really appreciate it.